The next session will be by Asish Abraham Joseph, who will be talking on the economic, human, and policy impact on mapping in the public sector. In this session, he'll be using projects such as the utility mapping of state electricity, of the state electricity board, uh, participatory, participatory mapping of government offices, and so many more to explain the experience in working on some of the major projects in the public sector related to free and open source GIS platforms and where they implemented OpenStreetMap data. So uh, without much more to do, Asish will go ahead. And if you have any questions as he will be presenting, feel free to add these questions to the session pad where, and you can find this on the detailed description uh, in the program. Uh, thank you so much. Can go ahead, Asish. Hello, everybody. So myself, Asish, from India. So I'm here to present my some experiences during working with public sector government departments. So the some of the uh, impacts we saw during some GIS projects with government are economy, human, and policy impacts. And let me talk about myself. So I am basically a free software web developer turned into force GIS. During some research activities we perform along with the state government force agency called IC Force. And currently I am working with a startup called Computing Freedom Collective and along with another NGO for free software developments in Kerala. So yeah. So coming to the topic, these are the projects which we did using Fast GIS mainly. So number one is uh, utility mapping done for the electricity board for optimizing their network. And then Another one is uh, mapping of government offices across in the state using a participatory model. Then another one is the uh, analysis of a fiber optic network route. And then next one is some canal digitization process done using drone imageries and some tools based on OSM. And then another one is a cartography project, which we done um, generating maps of for the local self-government bodies in regard of disaster preparedness. And next thing is this one thing which we done for as a technical support in our state IT department for a project initiative called Marathon Kerala. Let me brief about each topics, how we did these. So coming to each one by one. Um, first one was the utility mapping of state electric network. And the um, first uh, requirement, there, there was stunned yeah, because of the huge number of um, features to be mapped. But uh, at initial look arounds, they were um, going for artificial intelligence or any satellite imagery detection mechanisms. But later on, we could find out a less expensive way using the human, much human resource with the field department. And we could just uh, train them to use open data kit for a field survey and using that open data kit almost around 6,000 people mapped 1.4 million electric poles in 15 days with less than 5 meter accuracy. So that was very much required. That was very well sufficient enough for what our, our planning as per our planning and Later on, using those electric poles, which then we used some trained professionals uh, from the department itself. In we give training uh, in using Joseph, and those electric poles locations were imported to the Joseph, and we could draw 
uh, electric lines connecting those using OSM standards itself. Then, due to the uh, what is your uh, requirements of from the department, we uh, then later uh, developed an application based on OSM stack itself. As the everything was in OSM standard, we just made out a solution called Power Map, and right now every data is currently being migrated in the Power Map from um, the application. Right now, the uh, the whole data is residing in the PostgreSQL DB, and from that we are migrating into this uh, application called Power Map based on the Rainspot API and we just connected ID and Macnic for rendering maps from there. So this is one of our flag flagship project and then later on we just covered another interesting project called uh, Map My Office which was done primarily for mapping the state government offices of Kerala state and it was almost around 20,000 offices and we just made out a web application using HTML5 and Laravel and uh, we gave a social login for each department and offices so any member of each office can log into this social using social login and uh, there will be a basic uh, form coming with coming up with uh, asking the geolocation and these uh, attributes were uh, standardized in the OSM standard and we just collected those informations almost uh, 17,000 were mapped with an accuracy of less than 20 meter and once we validate there are some duplicates currently and once you validate and sanitize all the data this will be published to OSM later and currently the IT department is in hold of that project. Then next thing is uh, root analysis done for the uh, fiber optic network planning for um, the state done by IT infrastructure of our state. So, but initially there were some uh, concerns regarding with the total cable length requirement for the budget plannings. So, uh, initially the mathematical calculations were not going that much pretty good. Then we came to a conclusion that GIS will do much help rather than going for this normal means uh, the uh, traditional calculations so we just go on with the locations which we covered up in the earlier phase using this participatory mapping and those office locations we port into this this uh, was the offices for initial plan of fiber optic network and then from the point of processes POPs of the station nodes of fiber optic from those to each offices we just found out the locations using uh, through road data and using OSRM engine and we could get some uh, road private road data from this uh, central uh, computing development of um, the India's government and we could get some data from them and we ported them into OSRM and used it for creating the shortest route along the paths network and use from then we just uh, cleared and sanitized some data using the QGIS and GRASS plugins and we could make it in a single network uh, structure and finally we could find out the almost uh, approximate length as 30,000 kilometers using the same QGIS plugin called field calculator and then another project was the canal volume analysis of a paddy field area at almost around 4,226 hectare of area and we just used some 
uh, we just use some tool chains uh, in connecting with open drone map and open street map and almost using four drone pilots with uh, dj phantom drones and then uh, myself including four technicians along with them we just mapped out the whole area in just less than seven days and then using that data we just in the imagery data we could uh, generate a higher res resolution of the map which you can see in the figure uh, in with less than eight centimeter resolution and almost and then after using this ortho imagery as base map we could um, engage and work 20 people for and train them in JOSM and they could just uh, sketch the canal area out and that, that's how in OSM we just as we all know in OSM we just have uh, a single line structure for canal system but here we wanted in the three dimensions all three dimensions that's why we were tracing it out using this ortho imagery and after the, making the 2d image of this later we just surveyed depth from different points using cover toolbox and using those sample values and connecting this 2d diagrams we could find out approximate total volume of the area then another interesting project was in the automated cartography for local self-government bodies and this was done in regard of disaster preparedness along with the state disaster management authority here we had almost uh, we have almost more than thousand local self-government institutions and in uh, concern the requirement was almost around 30 different layouts 30 different thematic maps and using uh, QGIS and some plugins uh, called Atlas Composer, those things we could make out in the maps automatically. We could try out in the, uh, in the maps automatically generated and using some Python scripts. So then almost 31,000 maps were generated in less than 15 days. So that is um, some kind of achievement which we could make out in regard with disaster preparedness. So last but not the least, current project which we are uh, running upon and our state itself is one thing called Mapathon Kerala, which was in turn planned after, as regard with the recent disaster issues, natural disaster issues as flood and landslide currently being occurred uh, year after year. It's unluckily, it's still continuing. Um, so, as regard with that, IT department of our state has planned to make an initiative, a mass initiative for uh, putting out the whole data into OSM and use make the most out, out of it for each department. So our part is uh, just to give technical support for that, which will encourage the contributions using some game-fed tools such as scoreboard and any map roller such applications such um, private instance of such application customized will be used for the purposes of contributions and then some statistical analysis or any visualization tools for these departments also are also being proposed and currently we are being working on that so these are the main projects which we covered upon and coming to the main topic and the impacts so during each project these were the concern which we got means how much money should we spend or should i spend then how much accuracy do i need and then how much human involvement these three questions were arising upon whichever project which we came across 
So, from the very first project, the money, what money should I spend? Then, in regard of the electricity board project, at very first, the concern was, shall we go for this uh, satellite imagery, machine learning processing, or something like that? Then the budget shooted across means more than 200 crores INR, I think. So that was the initial estimate they could find out for finding out this thing. So they were planning to buy some high resolution satellite imagery also. That was the main cost pricing factor, I think. But later on, we could propose something using Open Data Kit and their, their field staff itself. So in that project itself, we can see the accuracy necessary necessity was less than five meter. Means nothing, uh, no bounding precision works required. Means anyway, there are people. There are there are some changes happening to the network day by day. There will be some additions. There will be some updations. So those things we have to change it one or another way. So at first we could have just mapped it out whatever things are there. Then using such uh, infrastructures as of as open street map, we could just update those uh, data uh, based on the satellite imageries or any other um, provisions which we have. So then there comes the question. There was the question uh, of accuracy, which is now clear. Then the later question was how much human involvement? Just as the electricity board have that much yeah, intelligent means that much technical oriented staff which have a good knowledge about their their own network, we could just able uh, to collect the whole data within 15 days. That was a great achievement for us. So. Using those 60,000 people, as, sorry, those 6,000 people, we could just um, collect the whole data which is spread across 60,000 kilometer line length span of the network. So that was one thing there. And later on, looking the other projects also, the main regard of OpenStreetMap, as I believe the main regard of OpenStreetMap is also regarding this human involvement, improving the human involvement rather than the money being spent over money being spent. And in those regards, how, how to balance the accuracy then? Uh, without being much money spent and involving the human, how we can maintain that accuracy? That was our main concern in all, almost all projects that we could uh, achieve something way better i think and the, every results of each projects were really good for uh, regarding the government purposes that's all <laughs> thank you everyone so myself uh, ashish Abraham joseph my voice my id is as follows and the, my email id is as follows as is at the rate cfc.net.in and currently I am being working as a software engineer at uh, CFC in the company called Computer Freedom Collective and startup run by us and that's all for today. Thank you everybody. Great. Uh, it's been really amazing seeing the use of OpenStreetMap data and also free and open source uh, geospatial software in the urban planning space and infrastructure development, as you've presented. We have a few questions that have been have been posted in the session. Uh, it's been really amazing seeing. So uh, the first one is what addressing standards were used to provide addresses and unique permanent codes for plotted buildings? And have you considered using open location codes from Google? Hi. 
Thanks a lot for asking me that question. Actually, we haven't used any such uh, open location standards and open location codes. Uh, but in regard of the electric utility mapping, there was one concern they, they required a unique identifier, such any numbers. But that time, we couldn't give any such solutions. And seriously, we would consider this into th that project. Okay, um, so for the second question is, um, how open is like, the data, government data in your know, area? Is it, is data, is government, is, is the question, the exact question is, is much data a government secret there? So I guess yeah, the person is actually, how uh, open government data is. Yeah, I think so. Uh, so regarding that question, uh, it is really interesting. Actually, currently, gov yeah, India government, the whole central government is in process of creating an open data policy for releasing the most of the data as pub uh, public uh, in regard of the GIS data also. But mostly, some of the departments are yet to release this data in the public. So uh, I think most of the data are still not open just regard of the accuracy issues and some sort of confidence issues how they can publish it so uh, that is the main concerns most of the departments which are showing it as a uh, what is it suppressing the data to public rather than being given into as open so right now uh, regarding some of the projects which we uh, did, uh, uh, the one electric mapping, that one project, the whole data is public. And also um, other uh, mapping office, the government institution mappings, those data are also recently being public. So uh, once the validation is uh, completed, those data will be added to put into open statement. Great. Uh, the next question. I saw you presented something on telecommunications. So this person is asking, so 30 kilometers uh, is the proposed fiber network. So how much fiber is that? Um, like how much fiber does, does that translate to? <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, I also ha don't have much idea about the real numbers uh, in the field. Uh, the Our involvement was purely based on the research power, basically regarding the budget planning purpose, those areas. And we didn't get any actual numbers while it went into implementation. So I, I mostly I hope the numbers are almost similar to the ones we proposed. Okay, um, the last question um, is on the mapper, your, your mapping team. So someone is asking, how did you find, recruit and train 6,000 mappers for the project, for the first project that you mentioned in your presentation? Yeah, actually, the, those 6,000 are already the fields to the electricity board. And we just uh, uh, collected those fields up from each different areas so that they have a basic idea, a basic technical ideas. They are just the field officers themselves working for the electric. And we just give them a basic training on open data kit, uh, how to use the surveying tool uh, for the purpose of mapping the electric poles. We just gave them a basic training using virtual methods. And those that was very much, uh, what to say, effective. And we just got the whole data in less than 15 days 
almost one lakh data was popping up in each days uh using those methods we could able to finish up the whole thing within expected delivery times Uh, okay, uh, that was the last question. Thank you so much for sharing with us the projects that, that you've done uh, in your area. Uh, we've not had, I've not personally, I've not heard so much about OSM in the in this space, the urban planning and infrastructure development space. So it's been nice learning a thing or two about this. Uh, and I guess we look forward to catching up with um, like the progress of this project and how much more we can learn and implement in other countries as well. Thank you so much, Ashish. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for giving this opportunity. Thank you.